Well, hello there, and welcome back to the lands of Akathon. No professionals, no fancy tech, just a group of women playing an all-original game of Dungeons & Dragons. I'm Jeff, your Game Master, and here's what happened last time. After the clan memorial, the four got together to plan their next steps for both the public ceremony, which would happen three days hence, and the vote of the clan council for new Lord of Thunder's Edge the following day. The extended group made their final preparations for the ceremony, as well as checking in with Aralakis on RSVPs from the dignitaries and leaders from around Akathan who were invited. After talking with Gwen, Athgar agreed to travel to the Firefly Oasis to deliver a personal invitation to both Chieftain Teff and Gwen's grandfather to come and attend the ceremony. The four then had a private council about what tasks they had remaining on their list of things to do and which would take priority. Zorith contacted Mother Tassa about the dragon's involvement with the public ceremony, and she was informed that Mother Tassa and the other sept leaders will be attending, but no other sept members were expected. Gwen Lauren met with clan council member Shiven to ask about what would be expected of her for the ceremony, now that she and Athgar had been maneuvered publicly into declaring themselves a couple. Aralakis contacted Arabelle asking for help with fending off an attack at the Lord's Keep, but his message got cut off in mid-sending. The four grabbed Athgar and headed to the Keep, where they fought an advanced Jogravanan attack squad who were seemingly intent on assassinating one or more of the dignitaries resting inside. In the battle, Aralakis was killed, but was revivified by Arabel once the battle was concluded. The group decided they would all convene in Tasha's mansion for the night, with Arabel sleeping on the couch in the living room and Athgar and Gwen stretched out on the floor in front of the fireplace. And we pick up the following morning. So, it is the day of the public ceremony. I wake up and rub my aching hip from where it uh, <laughs> connected most firmly with the floor. And then stretch and nudge Athgar with my foot. Hmm. He turns his his head over his shoulder. He looks awake. Good morning. We'll see. Sleep well? For as much as I slept, yes. Are you exhausted? I imagine one way or another I'll sleep better in a couple days. Hmm. Let me get some coffee. That sounds wonderful. I'll head to the kitchen and put together a plate and some coffee. Um, you hear Athgar's voice in your head. I don't know if she's awake yet, but bring some for Arabelle, too. She would not be on the couch at this point. Oh. She'd be up praying to get her spells. Ah, okay. Well, then he wouldn't send that. Okay. Because he would see that you were gone. So I'll come back with fruit, muffins, maybe some bacon or other protein. And coffee. Okay. I think I'll just start with the coffee. It's going to be a long day. It would not do to start it on an empty stomach. Well, I'm weighing that against the possibility of throwing up whatever I eat. You're that nervous? 
Yes, not about the ceremony. That'll be fine. But the vote. Well, at this point, what's done is done. And it's out of your hands. So worrying about it gets you nowhere. And honestly, if anyone could have any doubts after the way that you worked to defend the city yesterday, then to hell with them. All good points. And unfortunately, not going to have any impact on my nerves. You need the equivalent of a magical Valium. <laughs> yes, because that's exactly what I need, is to be altered in some way. Should I, I have brought beer this no. morning? No. As I said, the ceremony is actually going to be, I think, almost pleasant. Well, I'm sure that there will be a large turnout, as your father was well-respected, if and, not well-liked. And I expect I will see many people that we have come to know who I have not seen in some time. Yes. So let's stay focused on that. I'm going to try and perform that song consciously this time. You'll have to let me know if it sounds different. Indeed. Well, We have a few hours. Is there anything else we need to take care of before we head to the keep? Is there anyone that you wouldn't want surprised by the news of us being together? So you know, I did inform Tef and your grandfather of what Shivan did. How did they react? Differently. Tef thought that that was sound political strategy, although he understood that it was uncomfortable. And grandfather? He seemed upset that I believe his words were if you two were going in that direction why didn't you just have the guts to man up and spell it out first? Ah. Uh, I do hope you mentioned that it was early days and... I did and he basically told me that the only reason it was early days was because I was an idiot <sighs> well I can't say I'm entirely surprised that he reacted that way but uh... on the other hand I think one could safely interpret that as a blessing I As suppose approval. I will ask him if that should be our interpretation. Yes, I'll be interested to hear what his response to that is. But I mean, you did tell him that this was a ruse, right? 
I explained it to him the same way I did to the chieftain. Okay. Um, he understands that this was something that was more done to us than for us. Correct. I don't think that mattered as much. Well, he's probably assuming that you'll be elected and therefore the expectation would be that we would follow through on that. But again, premature. Yes. Anyone else that you feel should know? We wouldn't want there to be a scene. I can't think of anyone. Can you? Was there any promise given by Lord Tremaine to anyone that would take offense to hear this information? Were they to travel here? Hmm. Any understanding or discussions? That's a very good question. And one I'm afraid I do not know the answer to. Well, I know at one point your father had implied that your nuptials had been arranged. And so if that's the case, traveling here and spending time in Thunder's Edge, someone might hear and we would not want them to respond negatively and cause a political incident. Hmm. Forewarned is forearmed. Yes, I... I don't believe so. Not that it springs to mind. Who would know? Aralakis, most likely. Perhaps you could send a message to him and ask? I can do that. Since I'm sure he's awake, why don't I do that now? That would be... That would ease my mind. Um, one thing for everyone, sort of out of character, uh, make sure that you on D&D Beyond do a long rest so that everything is reset because we have all rested. That's much better than the 50 hit points. Thank you for the reminder. <laughs> right? And I, was I had thinking, forgotten about that. <laughs> I have zero spells. How does that even work right now? <laughs> Crap. Yep. All right. Cast sending and sits for a moment and then clearly he's getting a response. And you see him go. That last attempt by my father dissolved when I did not return. There is no other understanding in place. Good. Again, I just didn't want any negative reactions or fallout to mar the day. Understood. Also, I didn't want to have to kill anyone at your father's, you know... Well, Ceremony. there will be clergy of Pharos already on hand. Good. So. Glad to hear it. 
It is a probably. Public, it is a public ceremony, but it still is being overseen by the temple. Probably make it down about that time. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Are you feeling better? Define better. You're not bleeding anymore? No. No. (laughs) A little tender, but all in all, relatively hale and hearty. Though perhaps a bit nervous and overtired. Yes. Well, if it's any consolation, today is an easier day than tomorrow? It is. and Which is weird, but... I'm grateful for that. I feel like the other service was much more intense than this one. This one's more showy. I'll come down now. Good morning. Morning, Zuri. Morning. Did you rest, Gwen? As well as I could here on the floor. Should, should have had a the bit hold for that. We should have had the hold the mattresses from upstairs or from the portable hole. <laughs> that would have but been wise. I don't think any of us had any thought capability last night. No, no, none at all. <sighs> You're. We can't hear you. I'll come downstairs. Okay. Uh, good, morning, good morning, people. Morning. Maybe something light for breakfast? Well, Gwen brought in fruit and muffins and bacon. So far, I've had puff. Those sound excellent. Thank you, Gwen. You're welcome. I Does anyone... Does anyone have a remedy for stress and tiredness? Um, I don't think so. I don't have calm emotions. So. <laughs> I only have one of Zex Potion of Exhaustion's Resistance. Is he still exhausted? No. He's just okay. tired. Right, okay. So. so that won't do him any good. Okay. Yeah. And tired because you didn't sleep well. Right. Right, just not resting. Yeah. He he has no <laughs> levels of exhaustion at this point. Good to know. Yeah. Restoration's not gonna help that. No. I don't think there's anything for stress. <laughs> right. Well, maybe calm emotions. A shot? <laughs> it's early enough. The effects would wear off. But <laughs> Well, I did offer a beer. Gwen already suggested pharmaceuticals. But I thought that might not be the best idea. Not when I'm you... seeing dignitaries from all over the, the land. You could go up and take a bath. And soak for a while. That's actually a good idea. Might help with the soreness as well from the floor. I you mean, both press- could probably. Oh, prestidigitation does only so much. Right. I'll right. go. I'll go up and prepare the bath. That's something useful I can do. I'll give her, I'll reach into my bag since it's all sitting here. Uh, I'm guessing in my, uh, I've got like incense and stuff, like herbs in my healer's kit and stuff. So I'll give her some stuff to scent the water. Thank you. Oil aromatherapy. Yeah. So I'll head up to ready the space. All right. 
It's relatively what? easy. You tell the birds. <laughs> the I'm sure, it's magic it. water. It always stays hot, which is amazing. Right? <laughs> right? <laughs> well, I'm assuming, Tasha, is nice. that a correct yes. assumption? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. To let the water out, put more hot water in. Let the water <laughs> <laughs> Pretty nice. And I'm sure we all know what time we're supposed to be there. Yes. Same thing as the the clan memorial. Uh, we're supposed to arrive an hour before the event begins. This one is being held outdoors uh, on the lawn of the keep. <laughs> That's nice. Well, it's probably there's probably so many people that we don't have room otherwise. Right. And Tasha's performing at the ceremony, right? No. Oh. Mm -mm. No. I assumed she would be. No, the ceremony is uh, very similar to the clan ceremony, um, except it's a slightly longer speech a little different um Athgar's gonna try and sing the song that he sang the first time but he's gonna hopefully do it consciously this time and um and then there will be another receiving line oh no yeah yeah that yeah. all the dignitaries will come through oh just oh, the yeah. dignitaries yes well actually anybody who wants to attend Everybody's allowed to go through the receiving line if they want to, but a lot of the, a lot of just the the regular people who live in Thunder's Edge would be a little bit too intimidated to come up and do a receiving line of you know, the the former lord's son and the 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 uh, the chancellor and you know a dragon and you know, the most famous adventurers in the land. That's a little bit much for your average, you know, washerwoman. Or chimney sweep. <laughs> I'd do it. <laughs> we know. If would. any of our, you know, normal friends walk up, then maybe other people would feel like. Yeah. And, you know, you can pretty much assume that, you know, they'll be there. All right, so Athgar excuses himself and goes up, and tops off his coffee and takes it with him. But arrives in the bathing chamber, undresses, and climbs in the bathtub. Probably he should be aware that there was only one tub prepped, and I'm in it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it sounded like. I was going to ask before she went up, but... Uh, I figured she, he was going to get a massage or something. I assumed I, that there was one tub, so... I thought there, there was two rooms, but... I thought there were more tubs in her thing, like four or something. Exactly. I think there's two rooms, right? I, I think there's... At least mm -hmm. two rooms. There's at least yeah. two bathing chambers, and there's at least. But she two only tubs. made up the one. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> there's more than one way to deal with stress. Oh boy. <laughs> so Athgar wanders in, a cup of coffee in hand, stops in mid drink. <laughs> Cheeky. I can prepare a separate tub if you'd prefer. Please. <laughs> so I get out of the tub and go Naked. to prepare the other tub. Naked. Mm -hmm. Well, this culture doesn't have any hangups about nudity, so. Well, and certainly Gwen doesn't.
So once it's prepared, then he will disrobe and get in the other tub. Massage? I'm quite content to just soak for a bit. Okay. I get in the other tub. <laughs> Wait a minute. As in... The other open tub? Yes. Okay. Just well, checking. I Yes, I get back in the one I was originally in in the first place. Oh, that's okay. funny. <laughs> Let me prepare this tub for you. I get in the tub. <laughs> funny. Yikes. Just trying to help your stress level, dear. You see Athgar, his mouth is moving... Like, he's trying to think of what to say, and he's failing utterly. Okay. We are just starting out, remember? Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> but are you diverted? See? Well, it just... Diverted, yes, but the... Vote nerves were replaced by a completely different set of nerves. You're welcome. So the nerve level didn't really go down at all. It just changed. <laughs> Neither did any of I didn't say it. <laughs> yeah. I know. Trust me to say it, though. This is reminding me of Long Kiss Goodnight. Mm-hmm. Athgar, I am just trying to figure out what will make the day more pleasant for you. Don't overthink it. Time travel. That I have not yet managed, mm -hmm. but honestly give Zori a chance. Hmm. Well, I have not heard or read of anyone actually accomplishing that feat. Like I said, give her time. Hmm. But you know, you are under a lot of stress, so I won't take offense that that you didn't want to share my bath today. Maybe another time. Maybe another time. Oh my. Meanwhile, back at the ranch. Probably going up to the other bathing chamber to bathe and then start getting ready. Mm. Yeah, I should probably take a bath too, considering all the blood. Yeah. See, I was just being thoughtful of all of the other people who also needed to bathe today. Right. That's just the kind of housemate I am. We're all so lucky. <laughs> <laughs> Some would think so. <laughs> oh, boy. All right, so uh, anything else specific that any of you want to do before departing for the keep? Um, I will 
do something right before we leave, but that's it. Okay. Same thing you did? Yes. All right. And then I will ask Tasha to let me know when it's been seven and a half hours. Because she will know when it is exactly. Mm -hmm. And then I will do it again. That okay. should get us 16 hours close to, and then that should get us through the day. Okay. All right. Arriving at the keep is a little surreal because there is now uh, about 200 chairs and uh, the uh, stand where Lord Tremaine's coffin will be set and um, a, a, a carpet runner in front of where it will be and uh, Aralakis and Sten are both uh, there directing people um, there is there is some drapery set up all in uh, either black or uh, dark tan um, however all of the scars from last night's battle are still quite evident only so much you can do It's also good PR for Afgar. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> As you approach, you notice Gago walking out of the keep, walking over to talk to Aralakis. I need all of you to make a perception check. I trip over my robes. I see nothing. Okay. It's a 10. Oh, no. It's a 10. All right. I see my feet and the robes and the floor. 31. 32. 16. Oh. You rolled 16 low. is enough. Right, but with advantage, that's all I got. Wow. <laughs> a one and a three. <laughs> so, everyone but Zori. Aralakis doesn't look quite normal. Mm -mm. Define His, not normal. Here and there in small patches his skin has a vaguely blue tint oh no we're gonna go check on airlock this mm -hmm. we would remember what it looked like when a person was under the thrall of the Thwill New. Yeah, right? there was no visible sign. Okay. Just checking. I think he's poisoned, personally. Yeah. I am. Um going to walk over. I mean, I'm guessing most of us are, but... Right. Uh-huh. Uh I'm gonna walk over. Same. Come on, Zori. Aralakis doesn't look well. What? Okay. I gather up my robes. Okay. I should probably check and see if Athgar noticed. <laughs> yes. Even distract. Does... Does Aralakis look a little blue? 
Yeah, you... we're, we're gonna go check on him right now. Hmm. So, we walk over. Does Gay go with him? She sees you coming and like, you know, lays a hand on his shoulder as he's yelling orders and, and steps away to meet you about 15 feet away. Good morning. Mm -hmm. Lovely to see you. It's God. good to see you too. I understand there was some excitement last night. Yes. Is all well with Aralakis? Apart from his hide, which is a little odd this morning, he seems fine. He seems blue. Yes. Why? As Nothing you did. As No, I hope not. By who? What if he's allergic to me? I don't think that's it. He spent quite a wow. bit of time with you, we would have known by now. Well... Uh, yes, so, he doesn't seem discomforted in any way. His mind is as sharp as ever. Well, that's good. How close is he to us? About 15 feet away. Okay, I'm going to cast uh, Detect uh, Poison and Disease. Okay. It works within 30 feet. You are getting... Uh, no reading off anyone within 30 feet, including your lockers. Okay. He's not poisoned, and he doesn't seem to be suffering from any disease that I can tell. Hmm. Well? Does he seem to be feeling all right? He says he is. And I've not noticed him behaving in any different way from his normal overly gruff public appearance. <laughs> Should we ask him? Uh, that's entirely up to you. I have inquired and he has informed me that he is feeling fine, no ill effects from the evening's excursion. I'll approach him. Okay. No, 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 no. Don't hang those there. Those go on the side. There's different ones for the front. Aralakis? Morning, Gwen. Are you feeling well? You seem to be the color blue. Yeah, I guess. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I feel fine. Are there any... Uh, from what we've seen, or is Zor Zori's there, right? Yeah. Could this be a reaction from magic yesterday? Do I know of anything that... Mm, roll Arcana, please. Oh, that's much better. 24. You know that there are um, there are diseases that can be inflicted magically that may manifest as kind of a, a patchy uh, skin. Mm -hmm. There are a couple spells that might manifest that way, but they're self-cast spells, like stone skin. I, I meant the um, wild magic. Doesn't he get? Doesn't he cast magic? Oh yes, yes, you're right. That, um, but that's what I meant. Sorry. No. Because I. Okay. Not, not like that. Turning the entire body a color. Yes. Okay. But that and splotches. And they're very light splotches it's so weird yeah yeah it ain't natural oh well, i didn't sense any poison or disease that's causing it 
I don't know. I can cast Lesser Restoration and see if it does anything, but that I don't have Greater. I do. Right. You have Greater? Pretty sure I do. Hold on. Yeah, I have, I have lesser it as well. I, I have it. Oh, you have greater? Yeah, that would be oh, probably better. So does Athgar. I'd yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I cast it on Aerolacus. Okay. Um, he goes, eh, what in the world? He's the best he's ever found. <laughs> Or at least in a while. Who's casting spells on me? Guilty. I'm fine. You're blue. It's a big day. I'll take care of it. No one will see it. Trust me. Did it but do why? anything when she cast no. it? No. Damn it. All right. Well, we've done everything that we can. So. This is suspicious. Right, you should get go get this looked at. Yeah, I don't have time to do that right now. Do you have any uh, spells currently on yourself, Erlachus? Whatever Tasha just cast. Okay, that's already over. All right. Can I do one thing first just to make myself feel better? Go ahead. Okay. I am going to reach out and touch his hand and use cleansing touch, which will end um, a spell on him if there is one, since okay. he is willing. You feel the energy flow through your fingertips, but there's no effect. Okay. Then we've done everything that we can possibly do right now. Would that have the same effect as Dispel Magic? No. No. You are not, I'm not casting, casting Dispel, Dispel Magic on me. I He's got just too much asked. Stuff. That would be He's got really too bad. much stuff on him right now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I don't I have time asked. to take it all off and let you do that. No, we'll do that later. But like if he was under some duration spell or something, it should have ended it. I've never used that ability. It's pretty cool. When did you start noticing this hue? Uh, when I woke up this morning. But not before. I don't think so. If it was there, I didn't notice it. We didn't notice it last night. So. Nope. All right. We'll deal with it later and hope it's not a sign of bad things. Impending doom. Is there someone that can step into your role while you go look into this? Not for another couple days, I'll tell you that much. No. Just... Once the vote's done, maybe. But until then, no. Fair enough. Because, you know, if the worst should happen, and Athgar is not elected. Whoever is elected gets to choose their own Seneschal. Might be me, might not be me. Wow. <sighs> Erlachus kind of leans over uh to Gwen and says softly how's he doing this morning he's slept poorly and is stressed about the vote no. at least he's stressed about the right thing why I 
usually I can get a sense of where they're leaning. I have no idea. I don't know who they're going to put forward. I don't know where the vote stands. If it's just Athgar and someone else. I don't even know who the someone else or someone else is might be. After his vigorous defense of the city last night, anyone who does not see his worth is blind and foolish. You just described most of the council. Wasn't the deadline yesterday, and that's why the vote's tomorrow? For them to put forward their... Well, the deadline, they've submitted names, but we don't know them yet. Oh. Oh. We don't find that out until the vote starts. And is it only the council that is present? Yes. So will you be there as current Seneschal? I will be there, but my function is solely to record the vote, and then I will step out of the council chambers and publicly report the vote. So none of the candidates are there? They don't speak or anything? If they are council members... They are, uh, they are allowed to accept or deny a nomination. Anyone not a member of the council, if they are nominated, they are simply nominated, and if they get elected, well, they didn't have any say in it. So today is Athgar's last opportunity to sell himself. Well, yeah, if I could convince him to do that. Well. How well known is what happened last night? Uh, the story's gotten around. Basically, um, when the guards did show up, uh, we were able to report what happened. So, telling the guards is like telling the worst gossip monger in the city, except all of them are like that. So, at least well. all of the all of the Akathan military folk know, and all of the Rykeliad know. And then anyone that someone in those two groups might have told will also know. Is Athgar, did he come over with us? Well, right now, the only person that is with Aralakis is Gwen. Oh, oh, you guys stepped aside. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I thought we were still talking to him. Have the council members been made aware? They need to be. Yep, but I can't be the one to tell them. Nor can any of you. Let's just say that would possibly have the reverse effect. It would be seen as an attempt at political coercion. And that's not going to sit well with some of them. Who would be the best person to share this information. Well, I don't know if it's the best person, but a person that they would not... that they wouldn't raise an eyebrow at would be Shaven. I'm on it. Well, you better be on it quick. It'll also be, it'll be telling once the memorial line begins, the 
clan council will not walk the line again. So it will be interesting to see who stays and who leaves. I'm going to quickly, I'm going to put my hand on his arm and say, I'm getting this word out as quickly as I can. I'll be back. And I run over to the other members of the four and say, I need to talk with Shaven. I'll be back as soon as I can. All Is right. everything all right? She needs to be made aware of what happened last night. And she needs to get that word to the council. Hmm. Do you want one of us to tell her? So you don't have to run around? Or do you want to? I just If you want to tell her yourself, you absolutely can. But I was just trying to... How much time do we have? 25 minutes. And how long does it take me to get to her? Um, are you walking or running? Running. Five minutes. I'll, I can do it. Okay. I'll run. Okay. So I hustle toward her where I think she'll be. Okay. Uh, where is that? Where do you think she'll be? I assume she is... Well, I guess I'll check with um, Aerolachus before I go. Rather than assume. Oh, yeah. He doesn't know. He thinks probably she's coming directly from her house. Okay. So I'll start walking in that direct... Or jogging in that direction. Okay. You get within a couple blocks and you see her formal robes, staff in hand, walking briskly toward the keep. I move to fall in step next to her. <laughs> so, thought an old lady needed help getting to the ceremony, huh? If you would accept my arm, I would find, I would be happy to assist you. Eh, I'm fine. Well, have you been made aware of what happened last night? Something happened last night? So, I fill her in. Making sure to highlight Athgar's role. Um, role persuasion. Fifteen. I don't have a lot of points in persuasion. Son of a bitch. Good that Arabelle brought Aralakis back. This would be a shit show without him today. <laughs> well, I don't know if the rest of the council is aware of what transpired and Athgar's role in that. But they need to know that he vigorously defended our clan and the town from not just any attack, but an advanced squad. These were assassins. They're getting bolder. They are. First the hand of Tarara, and now this. Well, I'll tell everybody I can find beforehand. Once it starts, I won't be able to do it. Is there a way to get word to everyone at once? No. Well, I will have to trust that you can get the word out as quickly as possible, as I think that they should know. Well, I'll start by telling 
the ones that I know I can trust to pass it along. And hopefully we can sort of spread it out. That would be wise. This is... This is serious, and we the council should be aware that steps need to be taken to ensure that the city remains safe, especially during the ceremony today. Well, as I understand it, we're actually going to have some dragons with us today, so feel pretty safe. I know they're not here for that purpose but I'm pretty sure we can count on them to help if we get attacked again. I'm sure. It's lucky for the city that Athgar has such wise political allies. Hmm. Good girl. You're starting to think the way you need to. It's reassuring. I do what I can. All right. Well, don't wait for me. You've got other things to do. I'll be along in my own time. But I got a couple stops to make now. While Gwen's talking to Siobhan, mm -hmm. Siobhan I, uh, Arabelle leans over to Zori and asks her to send a message to Gwen. Um, make sure to point, have Gwen point out that Athgar um, took an assassin's blow to the back, um, but managed to stay on his feet. And Fine. had he not, then he wouldn't... Go ahead. Think, did he heal Arabelle? I think he healed Ar Arabelle, right? Yeah. Then he wouldn't... If he hadn't healed Arabelle, then she wouldn't have been able to bring Aralakis back. So I do very quickly. Okay. And Touch. I turn around and relay that message verbatim. OBT dubs. <laughs> By the ways. So please make sure they know the serious nature of this attack and what was at risk. I'll tell them. Thank you. I know a couple of them are going to say that it doesn't matter, that Aralakis would have been brought back eventually anyway, and then so would the rest of you. But I'll tell them. Okay. See you there. And I will turn and jog back toward the others. Right around the time that you get back, the seats have been filling up, uh, except for the first three rows. And about five minutes or so before the ceremony is to begin, the dignitaries start filing out of the keep. and you see lots of people that you recognize. I'll give some greetings as I go. Well, you need to get up to the line. Yes. Um, you do spot uh, a couple people that you didn't necessarily expect to see uh, Jojo and Kieran. Oh. I, I definitely take a moment to greet them. And they just kind of wave as you run by. And at 12 noon, 
there is a gong that is struck. And everyone sits quietly, gives their attention to the front. Um, Lord Tremaine's casket is carried out and set on the stand. Um, you all are standing on the the carpet runner in front of it. Um, Athgar, then Gwen, then Aralakis, and then Gago. And then the other three of you. After the coffin is placed on the stand, the bearers step back, the high priestess of Pharaoh steps forward and offers a brief prayer. And then she turns and nods to Athgar. And Athgar steps forward. We are gathered here today to pay tribute to Lord Sengor Tremaine, leader of the Lion Clan, veteran of the Dragon Orc War, and son of Varys Sudartan, former Lord of Thunder's Edge. I welcome you, dignitaries and representatives from across the Cathan and also offer my personal thanks for gathering to pay tribute to my father. His chest would swell to see so many here to wish him Godspeed on his way to the afterlife. Like his father before him, my father helped guide Thunder's Edge from the ruin of the Shattering to become the wall against evil that protects all of Akathan from the horrors in the God's Wrath Desert. He courted strength and security for all who live in Thunder's Edge, including securing alliances with those who could best assist us in our duties. Aralakis, Master Sorcerer and Protector of the Realm. Gagointuth, the Serpent of the Sands, who stands beside him, and the members of the adventuring band known as the Four, who also stand with us today. Heroes of the realm all, friends to Thunder's Edge, honorary members of the Lion Clan, and founding members of the Mithril Sept of Dragons. With these stalwart and intrepid souls to assist him, Lord Tremaine navigated a treacherous world of threats from across the desert, keeping us strong and vigilant, and serving as the mighty defense Akathan has always needed Thunder's Edge to be. May his actions be his promise, his devotion his eulogy, and his love of this community and its citizens, his legacy, to be carried on by the next Lord of the City. As a devout follower of Dressfiend, I was blessed with a song long forgotten, one that used to be sung to honor the passing of a member of the Lion Clan. It is my pleasure to perform it once more for my father. And he begins to sing the same tune that he did at the clan funeral service. The melody is slightly different. The intonation is a little different. But otherwise, it is exactly the same song. And as he begins to sing, there are a few 
muted gasps from the people there as clearly a few recognize the language and perhaps even understand the song. When he finishes, he looks up. I thank you again, all of you assembled here today, for making the journey to pay tribute to Lord Tremaine. As many of you know, he was not always the easiest man to get along with, something I have much personal experience with. And there's a slight chuckle. But his first priority was always the safety of his people, his city, and his country. Let his actions in pursuit of those goals always be remembered. We will now receive those who wish to memorialize Lord Sangor Tremaine. And he steps back as people start to clap. And he just kind of glances down the line and nods. And you see people start to start to approach. And leading the line is Lord Bonefane. Followed by Major Warbender and Lieutenant Nook. He walks up and speaks to Athgar and Gwen, speaks to Aralakis briefly, and um, extends a hand to Gago Inthul to formally greet her. And then he walks down the line, but he stops in front of Arabelle. She curtsies as appropriate. Lord Bontain. I wonder if I could ask a favor. Of course. It has long been a tradition of mine to receive a blessing from one who is in your new position. I would be honored if you would do so and he kneels in front of you. I what I want to use. Um. So it would just be bless, or I don't think ceremony is the appropriate thing. No, just bless. Okay. She would... Uh, cast bless on him. And when he kneels, there is a not so hushed murmur throughout everyone else, kind of like, oh, 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 holy shit. She, you know, makes sure to show that she's grasping her holy symbol and casts it upon him. And he gets up and inclines his head to you and then turns and you see Major Warbender is just kind of standing there a little wide-eyed and not moving and you hear Major we should probably go <laughs> huh? oh hey sorry I just yeah I don't think I've ever seen him do that to anyone before. Well. 
Asgar, I'm really sorry about your dad. Thank you. Is it sergeant now? Lieutenant. Lieutenant. Well, congratulations, Lieutenant. Thanks. It's a lot of work. <laughs> but I think I'm figuring it out. Anyway, we're going to stick around, I guess. The Major and I. So we'll talk to you afterwards. I don't want to hold up the line too much. Next up is Jojo and Kieran. Is it Kieran or is it Viesa? <laughs> Just curious. Insight check? <laughs> uh, make an insight check. Twenty-five. Unless Kieran has taken to swinging his hips like that, yeah, it's not Kieran. <laughs> I figured we wanted to be here for sure, but you know, certain somebody can't exactly go around just you know out in the open. So I brought my nephew. Can we all hear it? Mm-hmm. Okay. I smile. <laughs> well, your your nephew is welcome. And you hear Kieran go, Well, that's always nice to know. <laughs> I'm sure we'll have time to chat afterwards. Do they stop down by us? Oh, yeah. Uh, she leaned down to Kieran, you know, and verbally say, it's so nice to see you again, Kieran. And then she'd lower her voice as she leans down and say, you might want to not swing your hips so much. Oh, thanks. I'll see what I can do about that. I know it's a habit. <laughs> you have no idea. Next up is a group of people you probably didn't expect to see. It's Fen, the speaker from Bolinamard, accompanied by Master Tube and Jass, uh -oh. the young lad who runs the inn. Oh, that's awesome. Welcome. I, I have long wanted to visit this great city. I am just sorry that it took something like this for me to come down, but you have done so much for us. There was no way I was not going to come and pay my respects, both to your father and take the opportunity to once again thank you for what you did for the city. Next in line are three people you've never seen before. Um, a a very dour-looking woman. She appears probably to be a paladin. She's wearing the holy symbol of Pharaohs. And she introduces herself as Tana Gumen, the keeper of the pentagonal seat. Which you would recognize is the uh, the ruling council of the uh, Citadel Krekazaki. Wow. And she introduces um, Fenara Zeril, 
and Dalaba Quill Sharpener. Um, uh, representative uh, Fenara Zeril is uh, a druid representing Quisva, and Dalaba Quill Sharpener is a wizard representing Oaris. And um, they basically just sort of murmur, you know, traditional condolences and things like that. But um, Tana does mention to Athgar and to uh, the four of you that she's hoping to have an opportunity to speak with you all sometime in the near future that she might be able to use your help. Let's let's talk soon. Next up, you see a familiar face dressed in what for him is probably the only decent suit he owns. It's Duncan Nonami from uh, Costed's Wave. Welcome. Thank you. I, this feels very strange. It's good of you to come. Of course. This is, you know, this is someone, the Zoris family that she has chosen. And of course I would come. Her brother would expect me to come. So I am here. And this is the best suit I own and I still feel underdressed. You look wonderful. Um, next up is a halfling gentleman dressed very nicely uh, who introduces himself as Picatian Littlefoot oh god um, Picatian and he explains that um, he is the uh, the innkeeper and nominal community leader of the farming village of Cropshire, which you've not had opportunity to visit, but you know about. A lot of the food that people in Akathan eat comes from Cropshire. Sorry, I'm just having problems with all their names. Right. <laughs> um, next up, you see another familiar face. Um, it's Captain Verthana from Dark Coast Keep. who makes a point of extending a hand to shake hands with Athgar and bowing respectfully to Gwen. Um, he looks a little odd when he gets to Gago. Kind of stammers a little bit and she just kind of smiles and reaches out and pats his cheek and When he gets to Arabelle, he says, So that is a dragon. An honest to God dragon. She leans in to give him a hug and says, She's not the only one here either. <laughs> but they're all nice. Lovely to see you. Yes. Good to see you too. I'm glad to see the show doing well. I'm sorry that it's something like this, but hopefully we'll get a chance to speak afterwards. 
Thank you for coming. Up next, you see people that you recognize. Uh, High Curate Nokomis from the Fela Fairy Sanctum, along with Father Dilbus and Master Ranro. She is very formal. Father Dilbus and Master Ranro are not. <laughs> like when Joylena gets to Athgar, she just immediately steps up and wraps him in a hug. And although he's trying very much to hide it, Gwen, you see his facade crack just a little. And I reach over and just squeeze his hand. And you hear her say quietly to him, I will remain. I have something for you that I think will make whatever comes next a little easier. Drugs. Is it drugs? Because it should be drugs. <laughs> I don't say that out loud, but I'm saying that. He's going to need them. Right. Maybe some shrooms. A little sure. Microdosing. Sure, that's what it is. <laughs> Next up, you see the contingent from the Firefly Oasis. The Chieftain and not only Theo, but Arona as well. And Tef says, I'm so sorry. Oh no, this must be difficult for you. It's a little strange being that I've not been anywhere east of the Oasis before. Uh, we all thought that this was all ruin, <laughs> but this is impressive. It's huge. I've never been to a city this big. So, you have my condolences, lad. And, uh, well, I hope that uh, you're able to get through this. Just remember, do what you need to do for yourself. Because if you don't take care of yourself, then you can't help anyone else. Okay? I'll help take care of him. They will too. You will definitely want to introduce yourself to the woman fourth in line. She is a dragon. She's she the is serpent a... of the sands. Oh, that's a mighty impressive title. Well, if you'll excuse me, <laughs> and he walks down. Theo walks up and just looks Athgar up and down. Yeah, you'll do. Grandpa. Then steps up to Gwen and gives her a huge hug. And I hug him back. I'm so glad you're here. Well, Thank you for making the trip. Your young man came and delivered the invitation in person. How was I going to say no? Yes. But, that was uh, good of him. I figured probably best to leave the cat at home, so I brought her instead. <laughs> Hi, cousin. And I give her a warm hug. Hello. My Thank you. My father sends his greetings, too, and his condolences. Thank you for accompanying Grandpa. Of course. I wanted to see where this place you were... You were brought up in what, what it looked like. 
It's very large. How do you not get lost? Well, I did grow up here, so I, I learned my way around. But I'd be happy to show you around the city when things are a little less busy. Ooh. I would like that very much. Okay, we'll, we'll talk soon. Next in line is something a little different. You see Vines, who is walking behind an exceptionally large wolf. Hello. And as the wolf steps up, its form shifts until there is a very tall, rather statuesque, older woman dressed all in dark green from head to foot. Wow. An impressive transformation. I am Helenia Liadon. She's, uh, she's the arch druid from the forest of Ambliantha. She insisted on coming. Uh, honestly, don't understand why. It was necessary. I wanted to see this young man and these women who went out of their way to save you. You put your lives at risk to save one of my children. I will not forget this. Thank you, but he did us a great service. And it was only right to ensure that he made it out of that dreaded place. He is our comrade, and we do not leave those behind. Ever. She looks at Vines and says, I see now that you are not exaggerating. It is good you have made such friends. Young men, you have my condolences for your loss. But know that your father is now in the hunting grounds, where his spirit will roam and prowl and hunt with others from your line. So while you may miss him, do not mourn for him, for he is where he desired to be. I thank you all again. I will not forget what you have done for my child. And she begins to shift again. Except this time it's into a giant eagle, which just takes flight and flies out of the city. <laughs> wow. Wow. Really impressive transformation. Oh, oh, I'm so glad she's gone. <laughs> you have no idea what it is like to travel with her. She doesn't go anywhere. Sure, we all hug him and give him comfort for what he's yeah. been through. <laughs> I am grateful that I was allowed to come, though, Afghan, and to be able to express my condolences in person. Everything in Belinamod is going fine. Um, apparently, Bo is considering staying. How is really? Hmm. How is Serena? 
difficult. <laughs> but my understanding is that that's no different than how she always was. True. I just... Um, and I should tell you that the the three ladies uh, coming up behind me are uh, the three temple leaders from my hometown, from Greenbrook. I know I don't think you've met them, but so you know who they are. How delightful. I have been given leave to stay for a couple days. So I will find you at some point and give you a more detailed report. It would be good to have you here. We've had some trouble. I was curious that Scorchbox. Well, I'd be interested to hear that story. You can stay at the four home, of course. Oh. No, that's not necessary. I already have a room at a, a lovely inn called the Ivory's Wrath. <laughs> oh. Well, that is the best place. Hmm. Well, the proprietor seems nice enough. He is indeed. Be sure to tell him that you're our companion. Oh. And friend. All right. I will do that when I return. Please do. Um, the next few people, like like he said, um, the three women from Greensboro introduce themselves as uh, Mother Skywire, uh, Mother Mirth, and Gardane Fireforge, who's the blacksmith who came along as sort of a man-at-arms for the two ladies. Following them are three people that you don't know either, or excuse me, two people. Um, uh, a gentleman introduces, him, is, introduces himself as Brator Ruby Eye, the mayor of Kilcross. Um, and his companion is Zafrib Timbers, who is the uh, the temple keeper of the Merry Mansion, which is the uh, the temple to Costas in Kilcross. Behind them, striding confidently forward by himself, is B.A., I hope I'm not upsetting any traditions by not bringing a, a retinue of my own, but I travel faster by myself. Athgar, I am truly sorry. Your father was a difficult man, but a good man, and he will be missed. Thank you. I, I appreciate it sentiment and agree with it wholeheartedly. And he makes his way down the line and talks to all of you and reminds you that, you know, you're always welcome in Romani Keep, that there will always be dinner for you if you happen to cross through that area. Hopefully we can soon. Next in line is a gentleman that you recognize. You've known this gentleman for some time. It's Osman Fellis, the mayor from Sandy Cove and Aaron's father. Ah, uh, yes. Is Aaron with him? No. Aww. And he... kind of looks down the line and speaks a little louder to address everyone.
I'm very sorry to hear about the death of your father, Athgar. We have not forgotten how you were instrumental in saving us from the dragon. And while I did not know your father personally, if he was anything like you, then his passing will be mourned. And he, you know, kind of, he, he shakes hands with, with everybody, except for Arabelle. Can I get a hug? No, you get your hand kissed. Oh. <laughs> well, then he gets a hug. It's lovely to see you. It's lovely to see you, too. I can't stay over long, but hopefully there will be time to catch up. Next in line is a tall, statuesque woman that you recognize being followed by an even taller and more broad-shouldered half-orc. It's Tasha's great-aunt and her uh, commander of the guards, Krendal. It is wonderful to see you, Aunt. It is exceptionally wonderful to see you. I have wondered. I assumed that you were well because I did not hear anything else, but <laughs> it's nicer to see in, with my own eyes in person that you're doing well. As well as one can. I hug her, of course. Yep. Yep. She. And I, she I shake Crandall's hand. Yeah, she made a uh, you know sort of a formal uh, offer of condolences to Athgar. Crandall just holds his arm out, and Athgar grasps it, you know, in kind of a warrior's handshake, and then he just moves on. Nice. And last of the dignitaries, you see Master Obrus and Master Indrus and Aaron. Athgar, I am so, so sorry. Your father was wiser than many give him credit for because he allowed you to find yourself and we were fortunate enough that you did so with us and Master Andrews leans forward and says I think it would be a boon for this city to have a lord who is as learned and appreciative of knowledge as you are. Certainly would be a big change. Indrus, I'm being nice. <laughs> and they go walking down the line and Aaron stops and says I'm not really sure how I got to get to come with them for this but I'm really sorry Athgar thank you Aaron that means a lot yeah I know I, I don't know what I'd do if I lost my dad so, I'm really sorry. Hi, Gwen. 
I gave him a hug. Oh. It's good to see you. Thank you for being here. Sure. <laughs> did you see that lady turn into a big bird? I did. <laughs> do you know who that was? I, I think do. she was the high dr druid. You mean from from the forests? The grove? Mm-hmm. He looks around, makes sure nobody else is nearby, and he goes, Holy shit. <laughs> Well, that's somebody I never thought I'd see maybe in my entire life. Same, friend. Same. We're very honored that she graced us with her presence. Yeah. I would be. I'm honored just to have seen her do that shift. That was really, really interesting. Indeed. I'm hoping I'll get to <sighs> learn how to do something like that someday. Mm, probably not. Well, if he gets to learn polymorph, mm. it'll be quite the same. But... And then he he gets to Zorath, and he just kind of gets this shy smile on his face. Hi. Hi. I hope you're doing good in school. I haven't heard anything otherwise. Um, some of it's easier than other stuff. Um, I'm. I'm really good at blowing stuff up. <laughs> um, not quite so good at the finding stuff out. So that's been a little bit of a challenge, but I'm figuring it out. It just, I don't know. The fire magic and the lightning magic seem to come natural and the, like the divination stuff just I don't know. It's like trying to swim upstream. It's just hard. It is hard. Some of it is super hard. Um, but if you need help, contact me and I'll help you figure it out. Okay. Thanks. Um, yeah, Master Obris has been really good, but he's, you know, he does stuff different than I do. Because right. he's a sorcerer and I'm studying wizardry. And so, right. I mean, he, he tries. And I appreciate, you know, that he tries. It's just he's not, not really all that helpful. <laughs> we can find you a wizard to help. That would be great. Have you, have you had occasion to visit the Linamar? No. Why? Uh, there's a friend of ours who's a very proficient wizard who happens to be in Balunamart at the moment. And True. rumor has it he's considering staying. And it's not that far from the tower. Who was it? I'm sorry, that was going to stay. Who's a wizard? Bo. Bo. Uh. Yeah. Yeah, I could, I mean, um, I could probably make the trip. It would be worth your while. <clears throat> okay. Well, yeah, if your friend there would be willing to talk to me, that would be great. You just need to, like, let me know and let your friend know so I don't show up and he's like, who is this kid? Yeah, we, we would send introductions for you. Okay. Well, thanks. Hug and... Hug and send him on his way. Yep. Um, after this, it's um, there are some some of the Akathan soldiers, uh, some of the Rykeliad, um, Wiggy and Jalea come through the line, of course. Of um, course. And Wiggy says, Yeah, really sorry about your dad, Athgard, but uh, if you happen to know, do you think that you're gonna win the Lord? I'm just curious, I got uh, 40 gold on you. <laughs> There's betting on whether or not I'm 
going to succeed my father? Ooh, of course, of there, course is. there is. Yeah. Yeah, she knows. Yeah. Afgar, they would they would bet on anything. The color of the grass if they could. Yeah, there's no grass here. So that would be easy. Color of the grass. Brown, it's dead. Exactly. So, yeah. But uh yeah, you know, so if you manage to get the uh, you know, selected or whatever they're doing, you know, uh, come and find me at the Wrath and I'll stand you a drink because I'll be 40 gold pieces richer because of you. Thank you, Wiggy. That's very generous. Eh, don't think nothing of it. He wanders down the line. Um, Hugh and Sar come up to pay their respects and Um, they basically, uh, Hugh says, just so you know, the next time you decide that you want something for breakfast, it's on us as a condolence gift. So you don't have to worry about it. You can just get some pastries, some muffins, some bread, whatever you want, because we know you've got enough to worry about. So... We can't do much, but this is something we can do, and we want to. Aye. That's we do. We want to. Right. You're so kind. If I may be so bold, you've all been very good friends to us. And, well, I don't think your father even knew who the hell we were. His son definitely became a friend, as did the rest of you. So, like I said, there's not a lot we can do in this situation, but we can at least feed you a little bit. Something, a, a meal that you don't have to worry about. Your kindness is definitely appreciated. Well, know that if I do end up as Lord of Thunder's Edge. Everyone will know who you are. Because you'll be the ones providing the Lord's keep with pastries and muffins and bread. Ooh. <laughs> we are going to need to hire more help. You will be able to afford it. Well. All right then. Um, so the line goes on for, you know, the whole thing takes about an hour and a half, hour and 45 minutes or so. Um, and everyone has return to their seats um, you're not exactly sure why um, and then um, as the last person gathers um, Gago steps out of the line and draws Aralakis with her. And you see Mother Tassa stand up from the crowd with three other individuals that you recognize. And they all step forward and as a group transform into Draco form. Including Aralakis. <gasps> That's why he's blue. Oh. Wow. Who oh, for is crummy. also a... Um, I'm trying to remember. Gago's copper? Mm-hmm. Or he bronze. Bronze, yeah. And he is also bronze. Although, there are patches of blue even in his Draco form. 
Oh no. He's a Draco Mage. And they take to the air and in formation drift out east of the ceremony and then come back through and as they get over the crowd they all breathe as they fly by was this like an F-15 flyby yeah pretty How much it's a blue angels that's um, what I was thinking of and I need all of you to make a perception check Oh my goddess. That would be a 26. Twenty-two. Twenty-nine. Thirty-four. Tasha. Yeah. As they are traveling off west in the distance, the priestess of Pharaoh steps back up to deliver sort of like the final prayer and everyone is sort of turning their attention back to her. Just as you are about to look away, you see one of the dragons in formation falter and... Fall? Fall. (gasps) Which one? You couldn't tell, it's too far away but it was clearly out of the city. Um, I look at the others and... Well, she's the only one who sees it. Oh, sorry. So, who's standing next to me? Um... Probably me or Arabelle. Or, I don't know if you're between us. Or um, sure. you are on the end. You are standing next to Zorif. I say Zori. I just saw one of the dragons fall. I need you to send a message to Mother Tassa and find out what happened. Instantly. Uh, Probably not good timing, but what just happened there? Not now. Oh, shit. Do do you need us? Silence. Oh. Okay. Okay. How far out of town was it? And I have her, I have her, like, give me a, like, hold up her hand and, like, like, do the point, like, where she saw it. Me. Yeah. Yes. So, can I tell it all? Um. Ooh, what would that be? Just make an intelligence check. Okay. Oh, for pity's sake. Okay. Um, just like a saving modifier? No. No, just a 20 plus your intelligence modifier. Okay. 21. Mm. You're pretty sure it's um, between half a mile and three quarters of a mile west of the edge of the city. Okay. Um, I I told them what Mother Tossa said to me and I like look around and I say I think the four of us need to go check on the dragons but also the dragons like I don't I, I mean, think we need to go check on the dragons what drops a dragon another well, dragon or a dragon that's ill I'm Why going, would the dragon be ill? I'm because it's Aerolachus. I'm going with you. No. You can't leave yet. No, you have oh, to stay. The service is over. You have to stay. No, I don't. Right, Arabelle well. starts heading out. I mean, we gotta go, right? If we're gonna right. go. Right. Can we teleport? 
I don't know where we're headed, and so I find a room. Well, we could teleport to the just outside of the western edge of the city. That would get us a lot closer. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'll have you do it. Okay. Athgar sings the disjointed tune, and all five. I'll get out the carpet. Okay. Awesome. Oh. Uh, send Eric Lakis a message, uh, Tasha. Oh. Eric Lakis. Are you all right? Oh, no. I guess he's with him. Right. Yeah. Eric Lakis. Thinking... Are you all right? Nothing. There's an odd. Um, harmonic resonance to the silence. The fuck? He didn't reply, but it feels weird. <laughs> um, she would approximately know where, because like, if you see something you can get an idea of where it's going. Sure. And then because of her keen mind, we will head that way on the carpet. Um, okay, here's the question. How high do you want to go? Because the higher you are, the easier it will be to spot them. Oh. Pretty high. I mean, yeah. What have we done before? We usually stay low to the ground. Yeah, you usually stay like 20, 30 feet off the ground. So like 40 or 50? Yeah. Will we still be able to... Oh, they're big, so yeah. 50 feet off ground. All right. Um, everybody but Zorif make perception check. She's concentrating on flying. <clears throat> Jesus. You tell me where's to go, I do the going. 31. 26. 29 again. Okay. Um, all three of you spot the area, uh, but Gwen, you see five glints of metal and one glint of looks like sapphire. It's a gem dragon. I... I say Zori there and I I point. You, I fly is there. Okay. As you approach several of the dragons see you and rear up as if to attack and then lower themselves back down apparently somebody recognized you but there is a a gold dragon, a silver dragon a copper dragon, a brass dragon a bronze dragon and a reflective blue dragon not the blue of the chromatics this one is deeper and looks harder. And that dragon appears to be unconscious. We've had discussions about the neutral gem dragons, but that there are none left. Right? Yeah. Like we've right. had that conversation. So we know if this doesn't look like the chromatic and it looks shiny. So it looks this... like a sapphire. <laughs> <laughs> this was one of the bronze before, right? This is Aralakis, right? Aralakis. For sure. Well, the bronze dragon that's there shows no strange coloration. Okay. So, was well, the bronze Gago? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
so let's get close and jump off the carpet and approach. Zori, you hear Mother Tassa in your mind. I don't know how this is possible unless this is some new form of magic, but Gago says that the magic she taught him was to transform as she is, not as this is. Could Aralakis be like you were and hidden, and when Tasha cast Greater Restoration earlier, it did something? Oh, shit. Well, but he was already turning blue at that time. Maybe it did it. Maybe the turning into the dragon triggered something. That appears to be. She's speaking out loud now. That appears to be uh, a good guess. But something else. This was not quite like me because. Well he lost consciousness and fell from the sky and transformed upon impact. So oh. he was unconscious. I don't know if Gago knows this. Maybe when he died yesterday and I brought him back? He died oh. yesterday? He just didn't for tell a, me that. Just less than a minute. Still, he didn't but tell he was... me that. And then he started turning blue. Evidently, sometime overnight. We noticed it this morning. We will have to see when he awakens, if he awakens. Um. For now, we should move him somewhere safer. Can we move him? Gago. That is a good point. He's a biggin. Can well, you, they might be able to pick him up. Can you teleport yourself and Feralachus back to your lair? I assume he has been there before. She just is just staring at him. And she just kind of absently nods her head. Well, then do so. And make certain that you render whatever aid he needs and alert us immediately when he regains consciousness. And she just kind of walks up and folds her wings over him quite tenderly and bows her head and the two of them just what the hell just happened <laughs> I do not know and I am not used to not knowing. Who had Return of the Gem Dragons on their bingo card for today? Not for today. I was thinking much further down the road. This is really weird. I thought when we'd get for to us. Western Akath and we would find them. Well, I... we won't go to Western Akath then. Western Akath will come. will come to us. <laughs> Maybe that explains the uh, attraction that they had almost immediately. Mm. Historically speaking, there were not many dalliances between the different demarcations of Dracofall. Well, a blue dragon makes a heck of a lot more sense than a dwarf. Is any a dwarf again? 
I mean, dragon makes more sense than dwarf. Eh, I was curious, but Gago has always been a little Unusual. more adventurous than many. <laughs> Yeah, we all try not to think about that. <laughs> <laughs> so, we have a uh, keep full of people who are wondering why the Thor and Athgar just tore the heck out of the city. We should probably get back. Yes. <sighs> we, have, we have a banquet to attend. And many, many people to speak to. Um... I am oh. going to cast um, as an or sky flare with white that everything's all clear because who knows what they're thinking happened. Okay. Hopefully they can see it this far. Well, the lookouts on the western edge should be able to see it. All right, well. We teleport back. Yep. Well, the ceremony went well. <laughs> you want to, you want to, or me, I can do this one. Yes. Um, I'll take you, it. If you would, take us to the teleportation circle in the bottom of the key. I will circle it. We no, well, you can't really. It's sand. There's nowhere to write the circle. Just where he wants us to end up. Yeah, but if you can teleport oh, okay. to the circle, I will do that. That's one of the ones that you don't need to roll for. Teleporting to a circle is an automatic guaranteed success. Oh, good. When we. When we appear, Athgar immediately hums a tune that you recognize is his sending spell. And he says, after a moment, Why don't the four of you go to the banquet? I will meet you shortly. I've contacted Sten to ask her to come to Aralakis' office. This presents us with a bit of a problem in that he was to proctor the vote tomorrow. I had already <laughs> thought of that. Right, right, right. So She'll fill in then? We'll have to. She is next in line. But I doubt she understands the procedure. So she and I will need to go over that immediately so that she can prepare. I will join should you at the banquet. We, we'll bring should her we keep it quiet as to why yes. he is yes. unavailable? He was called away by the dragons and, of course, went to assist them. Sten will know the truth, but apart from us, none other will. Makes sense. <sighs> Today was far more interesting than expected. <laughs> yes. Indeed. Kind of oh boy. takes away the worry about the other stuff because we got this now. It's always nice to have your worries replaced by bigger worries. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> Might not we'll be nice, to, but we'll, it's very typical for us. We'll have to add it to the top, top of our list. <laughs> well, and whatever, uh, like there's three people that want to talk to us about things that <laughs> we don't know. help. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, we need a Sten to be our uh, appointment secretary. We do need a secretary. <laughs> we need uh, Annie Potts from Ghostbusters. <laughs> Ooh. The four! What do you want? 
We got one! <laughs> <laughs> yep. All right, as... As Athgar heads up to Aralakis's office and the rest of you head to the banquet, that's where we're going to stop for tonight. Right. So, um, we'll pick this up next time with the banquet and then probably the vote. So, <sighs> yeah, going to be a couple, couple big episodes in a row. Mm. But uh, we hope that you'll come back and join us uh, to see how this all plays out. And uh, we hope that next time you'll be here and let us welcome you back once more to the lands of a Good night, everybody. Good night.